relating to get offerings, and he can't live by faith himself. I don't want to hear that preacher. You you can't teach me anything. Uh, so I'm turning them off, and that's what we need to do. We need to just tell people to turn them off and quit supporting them, and maybe they'll go away. So, uh, Ron, now uh, you were in this church for seven years, and then yes. what happened? Well, uh, the Lord gave me freedom to speak, uh, not in the church itself, but uh, actually out on on the street and uh, also uh, in my home on the uh, on my Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, the Lord gave the Lord gave me the boldness to speak out uh, the truth concerning what His holy tithe truly was. Uh, and when I began to speak out on it, the church. Uh, some of the members of the church were on my Facebook account, and so they saw it. And they apparently took it back before the whole church, and the church had a meeting, a uh, secret meeting. They didn't invite me and my wife. That's why I say it's secret, because we were members of the church. By all rights, we should have been invited so that we could de- at least defend ourselves. Answer the questions, yeah. Right, yeah. defend and yourself, right. So, you know, even a criminal in our today in yeah. today's court system gets a better, just, a better yeah. trial than I got. Yeah, yeah, I've been there. <laughs> but uh, they uh, they had they sent me an email two days after the meeting telling me that uh, they had had the meeting and that uh, they had decided that uh, we were no longer members of the church by unanimous Ooh. vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and until we repent of our unbiblical teaching of the biblical tithe, we were not welcome back. Oh, wow. And, mm-hmm. you know, the funny thing is, is I've, I've emailed them and I asked them, you know, well, well, show me the scripture where it says that God required us to tithe money to the house of God. Uh, I've challenged many pastors uh, over the years. Uh, and uh, not not one has been able to give me scripture that says that we're supposed to tithe our money. I've even told them I'll sign over, our, you know, and I, and I didn't tell my wife or I didn't ask my wife, but uh, and she's the only driver because I'm I'm blind. But uh, she uh, she uh, and I have a, a, a pathfinder, and I've told people, you know, if you can give me the scripture that shows we are supposed to tithe. I'll write you a check for a thousand dollars, and I'll give you our pathfinder. Yeah, amen. If you, if you if you if you find the scripture, because I have not found it myself. I I never found it. Uh, I know some people say, well, it's a tenth, so it's a tenth of everything. Uh, but I never found any scripture where tithing was money. So what about that? Ron is well, the uh, only time, is a tenth. They if, if if they required a tenth, then is a tenth money too? Well, the only time that the tenth was money, we find that in Deuteronomy chapter fourteen, uh, verses twenty four and twenty five. Uh, the Bible tells us that the second tithe, which is known as the festival tithe, the farmer or herder, uh, the one that was tithing, was to take his tithe to a place that God chose, uh, and he was to celebrate there before the Lord and eat his tithe. Now, that right there proves that the tithe <laughs> itself was not money at all. But the Bible says, yeah. the Bible says that if, he, if the way is too far for him or if the, uh, the tithe is too heavy to carry, then he can sell that tithe for money. He can exchange it for money. For whatever his soul lusteth after, forever, for whatever right. his soul, even wine, it said. Right. But see, if, if you notice that scripture, it does not say take the money and give it to the church. No. It doesn't say take it and give it to the tabernacle or take it and give it to the synagogue, the temple, the mosque, or anywhere else. It yeah. says to take the money to take the money to the place that God chose and buy the tithe back. You buy the food that you want to celebrate before the Lord, and you eat it yourself with your family. Yeah, well, they don't ever tell you that. I mean, did any pastor uh, oh, no, ever a, tell you that you could spend your tithe? That you could eat your tithe? That, did any? Yeah, did any? Uh, yeah, and I never heard anybody say that. <laughs> right, and then every every third year they were supposed to give that tithe away to the uh, widows, the orphans, the 
uh, Levites and the uh, uh, foreigners that were in Israel. Uh, yeah, well, you don't see that. No, you, what you see with all these seed, faith, gifts, and tithing thing is the pastor buys a jet, and he buys a mansion, and he buys a Rolls Royce, and you're riding a bicycle. Now, uh, you know, if we, we need to look at something real quick. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, this is important because this shows where, and it's not just Deuteronomy 6, it's elsewhere too. We could go into Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 10 and 11. But Deuteronomy 6 clearly shows that the commandments of the Lord were not to be followed or observed or kept until the Israelites crossed over the Jordan uh, and entered into Canaan. Uh, it says now, it's just the first three verses, it says, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments. It says, that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I have commanded you, commanded thee, thou and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of thy life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Now here's the verse. Hear, o, hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord of God of thy fathers hath promised thee. Now, he said it must be done, and he said who was supposed to do it. He said it was Israel that was supposed to do it. He didn't say Gentile nations. He said Israel. But he goes on to say, and he says in the last part of that verse, third verse, he says, in the land that floweth with milk and honey in the land as the lord god of uh, of thy fathers promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey that was the land of canaan they were not supposed to cross uh, to start obeying the commandments of the lord until they crossed over the jordan and mm -hmm. we can see that in deuteronomy chapter 12 verses uh 11 and 12 or 10 and 11 rather yeah that's interesting so, so tithing was not supposed to be tithing was not supposed to be observed anywhere on Gentile soil. God's command was that it, it was not supposed to happen until they crossed over Jordan and entered into the land flowing with milk and honey. Mm, the question I don't remember would be, any of us a, any of us doing that. Exactly. Uh, are any of us living in the land of milk and honey? <laughs> now, America has been a blessed nation. America has been a blessed nation, and they are blessed above a lot of nations. That's for sure. We have yeah, many things true. that other nations don't have. But yeah. we certainly are not blessed to the extent that uh, uh, Canaan was blessed at the time uh, that uh, they crossed over Jordan. Yeah. So uh, after you got the, uh, as they say, the left foot of fellowship out of your loving church there. Uh, so then uh, what happened after that? Did you ever see the, the pastor that you knew for seven years or any of the people from the church, or were you shunned? Well, we pretty much are shunned. Uh, we bumped into a couple of them at the wall, local Walmart, and uh, they act like we were strangers, you know. I mean, they, they were nice. They were cordial, but... Uh, you know, it was like a howdy stranger. How y'all doing? We ain't seen you in a long time. Yeah. You know, it's like nothing happened. We, it, it's all our fault that we're gone. But the funny thing is, is these same people that said howdy stranger uh, are some of the people that were in that meeting that kicked us out of the church. So they're the ones. That, they're the ones that caused us to be a stranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. To me, I know I've tried to explain this subject in the past to people, and uh, now I have not tithed myself since 1997, and I have uh -huh. not so I have not sowed a seed uh, since 1970, 1997, and uh, so I I have to confess that I am more blessed now than I ever was when I was always trying to buy God's favor. I was trying to pay him off and make him happy and uh, all of that. And uh, because, you know, that scripture you read, and I find it very odd that uh, these 
preachers on TV, most of them, and I'll name a few, Mike Murdoch, Benny Hinn, Rod Parsley, Paula White, Winita Bynum, The Word Network, Marcus and Joni Lamb on uh, Daystar, God TV. Yeah, it's Robert Norris. His name is the guy that's James Robinson's pastor. And uh, I find it very odd that these people all say the same thing. Now, I'm thinking to myself, they must all be attending. Like, uh, are they in a coven? Like, are they all? Are they in this group, this secret society, or something where they meet and they plan on how can we destroy Christianity? Uh, and they're doing a very good job of it because uh, the best, one of the best ways to destroy Christianity is to get people's eyes off of Jesus. And to get it on prosperity, Uh, how can I get more things for myself? And so, no, there's nothing wrong with wanting a better house or a better car or a better job. No, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, But what is wrong is that they are teaching you to be selfish. They are, and this that's not Christian. They are teaching you that the only reason you give is to get something for yourself. So they tell you, if you have a need, then you need to sow a seed. Or if you have a need, maybe you're not tithing. That is not true. It's not true. That That's not even Christian. There's nothing Christian no, not. about that. So no, it's not. who you know, are these were... people? That, well, they're deceivers. That's the thing, you know. the The thing is, is that the Bible shows that some people were deceived, and some people are also being deceived, or they're they're deceiving and being deceived. And that's where you can put a lot of these pastors that uh, uh, are, are teaching the tithing uh, message to their congregation. Now, you know, as I pointed out, the tithe was supposed to be uh, for the children of Israel. Leviticus chapter 27 and verse 34 clearly tells us that these are the commandments which God gave handed down to Moses for the children of Israel at Mount Sinai. And, uh, you know, the thing is, is these pastors, they fail to point that out to their congregations. Uh, you know, it really makes you wonder which Jesus. Now, here's the, here's the thing. They pronounce a curse on those that aren't tithing. But which Jesus will pronounce a curse on somebody for not tithing their money? Is it yeah, which Jesus? Jesus who is, yeah. is it the Jesus who is the the Almighty Son of God that died on the cross for our sins, that went to Calvary uh, to pay the price uh, that we could not pay, the debt that we could not pay? The the thing is, is they're pointing to another Christ. They're pointing to a Christ that uh, will curse you if you don't prosper them. Yeah, with yeah. the money. Exactly, uh, and see. See, Paul, Paul warned against that in more than one place. In, in Galatians chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, he said, If any man bring to you another Christ, or another gospel, rather, uh, than that which we have preached, and then that which we have received, let him be accursed. Now, yeah. you know, we talk, about, we talk about the curses, okay? He said, uh, the, the pastors say that uh, you'll be cursed if you don't tithe. God requires you to tithe, or you're cursed. You're robbing him. Well, the exact opposite is true. The Bible reveals to us that if we do tithe, that we're cursed. See, if you go over into Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1 and read down through the first few verses, you'll find out that the Galatians were rebuked by Paul. Uh, The apostle Paul said, O ye foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Yeah, bewitched. that's, That's the whole thing. They were bewitched into placing themselves back under the law or under the law after they had already begun in the spirit. And and what did Paul say in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 10? In Galatians 3 and verse 10, Paul told them that they would uh, that anybody that submits to the law is subject to the whole law. You've got to yeah. continue in all the law in the 